Do you want to know how to always kill an enemy champion when you gank? What's up guys, Coach Eeks here. And in this course, well it's all about ganking. And I'm going to teach you how to gank like a challenger. So after consuming this red hot knowledge, if you don't get a kill each time you gank a lane, then you have to be trolling. This course will show you just how easy it is to abuse the enemy laners and make them AFK before the game has even started. Chapter 1. The goal of the gank. When you gank a lane, why'd you do it? Because over the years, I've heard many answers. I want to get this guy's flash. Uh, this guy was pushed up. My teammate was asking for a gank. The thing about ganking is that it's actually really simple. You are ganking to get kills. That's it. So instead of asking yourself, can I gank this lane? Change it to, can I kill this lane? All of a sudden, we've gone from worrying about where the enemy champion is to worrying about if we can actually get golden experience out of it. Now, why is this so important? Well, everything in League revolves around golden experience. There is no stat at the end of the game that measures how many flashes you got through your ganks or how many laners you helped out because you felt bad they were getting dumpstered. Like I would rather tower dive 100 HP volley bear with no flash than gank a full HP Ezreal with flash and cleanse pushed up hitting my bot tower. An enemy being closer to your tower certainly gives you more room and therefore time to kill them, but so many players think that is everything when it comes to ganking when it really isn't. Chapter 2. The two ganking questions. So we've already established what the first question is. Can I gank? No, 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 no. Can I kill this lane? That's right. The significance of this question is the I part of it. Can you yourself run up to the enemy champion and kill them on your own? If you can, then these are the best types of ganks. You don't need anything from anyone else. You just right click towards your opponent and GG. But if you can't kill that enemy alone, and we'll get into all the details you have to think about very soon, then we move on to question number two. Can we kill this lane? Lane. This brings your teammates into play and their strength, and this is where ganks tend to fail because lots of players rely too much on the Wii and don't realize just how little their teammates bring to the party. So what are the two ganking questions again? Can I kill this lane? Good. And can we kill this lane? Moving on. Chapter 3. Are you a human or a sheep? Now, if you're scratching your head because of the seemingly inane title I've given this chapter, then you'd be right to do so. But there is a method to my madness. A human can think, a sheep cannot. So when your next teammate asks for assistance and spam pings you to gank their lane, think about it first. The number of players I've turned from sheep to human is probably well into the hundreds, which is weird because none of them were making any sheep noises, but they were just playing like sheep, moving their champion to the most recent assistance ping. So I will say this, muting all is an excellent strategy to improve because it's like a horse with the blinkers over its eyes. You are full focus on yourself. But to be honest, I just think of these assistant pings as, Eags, just double check you can kill that lane. Remember, your teammates think jungling and ganking is about helping your laners. Now it is, but you help them by getting to six items as soon as possible, not by running to a lane just to watch them die anyway. Chapter 4, My Strength. Now, the first thing to consider before ganking a lane is your own strength as a champion. So how do we measure this? Well, to be honest, we can do most of it visually. Just by looking at your own champion, you will know your HP, being full HP is very different to being half HP, level, being level 5, ganking a laner who is level 6 with their ultimate, sounds like you've been paid. Buffs, red buff is obviously a big weapon when ganking because of the slow and burn damage, but even blue buff can be useful on ability spammers like Hecarim and Lilia. The rest of our strength is manifested into your HUD and or scoreboard. Items, I already have Eclipse and Collector, this guy only has his mythic, gold. This is related to items because that's what gold represents, but it's important to recognize how fresh you are. The closer to zero gold you are, the more recent you have ran out of base. In contrast, making plays sitting on 2000 gold, well, it's rarely a smart decision. Cooldowns. I'm a level 3 Belveth, but I just use my E to farm a camp. I don't have it for 20 seconds. This will matter big time when you are level 6 as well. Chapter 5. Teammate Strength. So we've sorted out the I part of the equation, but what about if we need some of the we? Well, that's exactly the same as what we detailed in Chapter 4, minus the buffs part, the HP of your teammate. If they are literally one auto attack away from dying, there's probably not much they can do. Level. If they are level 2 and the enemy laner is level 3, they have one less cooldown. This would mean you're ganking a stronger champion. Items. Does your top laner still just have a Doran's Blade at 7 minutes? Gold. Because they still have their starting item, they must be sitting on so much gold. I'd rather think about ganking when they actually spend it. Cooldowns. My Mauser Heart doesn't have his ultimate, there is probably less chance we kill the enemy mid laner. Chapter 6. Ambushing is king. Not all the time you can ambush when ganking a lane. In fact, more often than not, you will be showing on vision well before you even deal damage to your prey, but it is key to understand that the less time the enemy champions have to respond to your showing, the deadlier the gank. 
So as we watch Pablo on Fiddlesticks attempt to gank or kill the enemy Syndra, she could make a cup of tea and come back before Pablo damages her. But then how does it look when the Syndra has literally no time to react to Pablo on Fiddlesticks ganking her? Well, no time to react equals kill equals 300 gold equals 1v9. This is probably also why lots of players in lower elos hate champions like Shaco because of his invisibility and Nocturne when he hits level 6. It feels like there is no time to react to their ganks. Chapter 7, Herding. Now you would think I have some sort of infatuation with sheep or something, I don't trust me, but like herding sheep, cutting enemies off from escaping your presence is critical to being a great ganker. They see you, so they will instantly try to run away. Your job is to understand where is that runaway to. So let's test you out. This is Adrian playing Kane, and in this clip he has two options in regards to the terrain he should E through. Now do you think he should E through this north wall or this south wall? Well knowing that the enemy bot lane will see him soon after he enters the terrain, they will run back towards their tower like 99% of others because tower equals safety. Therefore, if we draw a line from where Adrian is towards the enemy bot lane, this is the amount of distance the enemy bot lane can also travel away from Kane when they see him. No one is going to stand still. So you are herding based on the future, not on the present. You can't herd an enemy if they are already safe. So Adrian should gank via the south wall. Very good. Chapter 8. HP. Now it's time to get into the enemy champions you are actually killing. So HP, this is the most important factor to consider before you try to kill an enemy. Why? Because the more hit points someone has, obviously the more time, cooldowns, and your own HP it will take to kill them. So when Canyon on Lee Sin decides to gank Zaos on Jax on this clip, look at the HP of the Jax. Lee Sin's damage output easily covers the HP Jax has, and it's an easy kill. I don't like general rules of thumb, but most of the time if you gank lanes that have less HP than the damage your full combo does, it should be much easier to get kills. HP can also be indicative of someone staying or backing. So this Cassiopeia in this game, solo kills the Renekton but is very low HP, therefore she decides to recall instead of staying. And if we go back to Pablo and Fiddle, this Syndra being full HP, especially when the Fizz is so low, is never going to recall. This information allows you to see the future, you are never ganking in the present. Chapter 9 Flash. Flash is the biggest cuck to any gank. How many times have you ganked a lane only to see the enemy champions flash away to safety? You must know before you gank lanes if the opponents have flash or not. This is important for two reasons. Number one, the enemy champions can cover more distance when trying to escape, so hurting them is more difficult. Number two, how you use your abilities is dictated by the enemy having or not having flash. So two examples here. When Adrian on Kane decides to gank this bot lane and kill the enemy Jinx, no doubt this looks juicy, but guess what? Jinx has flash, FF. There is no time to herd the enemy champions because they are going to back off and be closer to safety if he waits. Next example is my boy Dylan ganking at Darius with flash. So with this in mind, do you think Dylan's EQ is a good idea? Of course not. The Darius can flash towards safety or he can do what he does. I think this is like Faker on a secret account or something. So all the J4 should do is just W and then auto attack while saving his EQ for Darius's inevitable flash. Remember, you can also go through your team's chat history by pressing Z and you can scroll up to see if your teammates have pinged any opponent flashes. Chapter 10 levels. Levels are also crucial to recognize before you go to gank. Levels represent cooldowns. From level 3 onwards, most champions will have 3 abilities. From level 6 onwards, every champion will have 4 abilities, including their ultimate of course. This can change a champion's strength quite drastically. But also with levels come stats, more HP, attack damage, armor, magic resist, and so on. The higher level you are, the more of a beast you become. So when David on Kane decides to gank this level 9 in Lowy, he said to me, watch this, this just sums it up. And he was saying that as if he was amazed that Lowy could 1v to an eventually 1v3, I look at this and think, why wouldn't she? Chapter 11, Teammate Timing. Now this is a more obvious detail, but still a detail. When you gank a lane, especially when you can't kill the enemies by yourself, you want the numbers in that lane to be even. So just look at this for me. David is returning on Kane and decides to gank bot lane. Can you tell me why this is bad without even watching it? Look at the Jin. All we are doing here is 2v2ing. David should simply wait for his Jin to actually be in lane, and then he would make it a 3v2. You need to time your gank when your teammates are interacting with their opponents. Chapter 12 being the plus one. Related to the last chapter, we are asking ourselves, am I making this a 3v2 or 2v1? But we are considering one more champion. Is the enemy jungler potentially here too? Whenever you gank, it is absolutely essential you know where the enemy jungler is. This will be particularly important when you are ganking stronger opponents because if the enemy jungler is also there, it's going to be GG if you die. So in this clip, the enemy Talon is a Grandmaster jungler, and you can tell how he doesn't factor into his ganking equation where Seb on Warwick 
Derek might be. Unfortunately, Seb uses his E way too early and ends up dying, but with a bit cleaner micro, the Talon's force gank would be 10 times worse, and it's probably a big reason why he is GM and not Challenger. Chapter 13. Vision. If your teammates have control ward set up, that's really nice, because you know the enemy champions won't see you until you actually show in the lane. But what about if you have no control wards? Well, it's very likely the enemy champions have trinkets or their own control wards in nearby brushes to alert them of you ganking. So before you gank, you should assume that the enemy champions have warded based on the position of the wave. If the wave is pushed up, their wards will be pushed up. If the enemy champions have been under tower for the last five minutes, their wards will be much further back. One cheeky trick is to press tab to keep track of the enemy champion's control wards. So if you see the enemy support with a control ward and a minute later it's not on the scoreboard, they have placed it somewhere. You should be able to determine where that ward is based on their recent movement. Chapter 14 wave state. Knowing where a wave is and where a wave will be is vital. This is because you are ganking in the future. Unless you're a level 6 Nocturne, you have to time your gank and showing when the enemy champ is hitting minions. For example, this cast clip I showed earlier, there was actually more to it than just she's low HP, she's definitely going to base. When she kills this last minion of this wave, I'm going to draw a line from her furthest minion to the enemy tower and then a line from the furthest minion on the red team's next wave to the same tower. Can you see how Cassio's minion is closer to the tower than the red team's next minion? This means what? The wave will crash. Excellent. This is similar but at the same time very different to that Zayas clip I showed earlier. If we do the same thing and draw a line from Jax's furthest minion to the tower and a line from the red team's furthest minion to the tower, the wave will not crash. This is why Zayas stays and Canyon, being the challenger jungler that he is, knows this and gets a free kill because of it. The last wave state I want you to be aware of is knowing that when a wave is crashed, it will slowly push back to the side that crashed it. So in this game, when our Freezy, who is a Grandmaster jungler from North America, kills the enemy bot lane, this wave is under the enemy bot lane's tower. So in the near future, the lane will push back to his bot lane. Knowing this can help you plan for future ganks on that slow pushing wave. It's just that our Freezy mistimes it, which leads us into our next chapter, chapter 15. Wave timing equals gank timing. You do not gank, like in the Casio clip we looked at, when a wave is not there. Well, you can if the enemy champions are greeting for plates or tower diving, but you catch my drift. So staying in our Freezy's game, look at what is next to him as he finishes Gromp, a minion wave. This is the wave he could gank the enemy bot lane on, and guess what? They are slow pushing towards him. Instead, he decides to do blue buff. Now, to really know the science behind this, waves come every 30 seconds. The first wave arrives in lane around 1.30 on the game time, the next at 2 minutes, and so on. Therefore, whenever the game time time ends in either 30 or 0, 0 a fresh wave has entered the lane. The fresher the wave, the more time the enemy champions will be spending to kill the minions. So, in saying all of that, it's a top-notch idea to gank when the game time ends in 30 or 0, 0. To be honest, I think it's even better to be a little bit earlier, especially as the game progresses because minions can die faster, so being ready to gank when the game time ends in 55 or 25 is a step up. These two ideas kind of go hand in hand though. Can you see how instead of doing my raptors and then krugs after finishing my wolves, I decide to gank the enemy bot lane because I know they have no flashes, and more importantly for this topic, there will be a fresh wave there. Can you see how there is a wave making its way to bot lane as I'm running down there? Because I see this pan, my ganks are a lot deadlier. Chapter 16. Distance equals time. Now, when you run to a lane to gank, will you actually get there in time? It's an essential question to ask because how can you kill someone if you can't actually deal damage to them? The easiest way to master this is to know how many seconds it takes to travel certain distances. For example, running out of base to an inhib will take roughly 10 seconds. So what we can do is take this imaginary line of ours, which is 10 seconds, and we can put one end of this line on Krugs. And funnily enough, the end of the line would take us into the river, essentially meaning it takes us 10 seconds to gank either bot or top lane lane from Krugs. Now if we tried to make this line go from bot side Krugs to the top lane, it's impossible. We would probably have to triple this line to have a chance of ganking. In other words, that gank is 30 seconds away. And guess what? Most champions who are either low or already fighting are not going to lane for even longer than 10 to 15 seconds. If we go back to my gank bot on the shack, I know it will take around 15 seconds to go from my raptors into bot lane, which would make the time 635. That is very close to 630. In other words, very close to a fresh wave timing. Easy clap. Chapter 17, Body Language. 
when champions face a certain direction or move in a certain direction, that person controlling them is clicking in that direction for a reason. Lots of times they do this toward. So when enemy champions deviate from the lane, they are most likely doing what? Taking a picture of the river? Probably not. They are going toward. The longer they are out of vision, the deeper that ward can potentially be. So imagining the enemy's fog of war is crucial to being a top tier jungler. The other body language to be aware of is where the enemy champions are posturing in the lane. In this example, Varus and Rakan are posturing to keep laning and fighting. Essentially, this means they will be pushed up and you will therefore have more time and space to kill them. This can also mean the enemy champions, by playing so aggressive, are using cooldowns to overextend fighting your teammates. Your gank could not be made easier.